Masterpiece is not a term I use lightly. Masterpiece's meaning, for me, resembles a show that's near perfect as possible. Some examples are the Arya series, FMA Brotherhood, and probably Attack on Titan for me. I don't think any show in this world is perfect. There are flaws in everything made by people, because people aren't perfect. If people made perfection all the time, then things would be at too high of a standard. With that being said, I do believe that Ashita no Jo is a masterpiece, despite it having some flaws. Now, Ashita no Jo is one of those shows that isn't licensed. It's very old, and it's kinda hard to find. It didn't even get a good fan translation until quite recently in the States, so this masterpiece didn't reach the appeal it had in Japan. I can't count how many times I've seen Ashita no Jo referenced in anime. There's even a spiritual successor to Ashita no Jo called Megalobox that many people enjoyed. But how did I like Ashita no Jo? I loved it. Ashita no Jo, or Tomorrow's Jo as it's translated in English, is a show about Jo Yabuki. He's an orphaned kid who wanders around from place to place. One day, he reaches a slum near a Namida bridge and encounters some people who are trying to take advantage of him, so he beats them up. The town drunk, Tange Danpei, sees this and encourages Joe to become a boxer. Joe just thinks he's crazy, but Danpei insists on him becoming a boxer because of his natural talent for fighting. Joe refuses, but through lots of time, persistence, and even a great rival, Joe accepts Danpei's offer and the two of them struggle together to become great. Sounds like your average sports anime, but like I've said in the past, sports anime usually come down to either shonen sports drama where we learn detailed info about the sport while we see the character grow within the sport, or a character drama where the sport is secondary to the character's growing. Character drama is where Ashita no Joe stands. Joe Yabuki is a great character. As a kid who was orphaned and had to become his own parent, there was lots in his life to get mad and upset about. So Joe starts off as an extremely arrogant and rude character. He gets into a lot of fights, doesn't really listen to authority, and even scams people out of money. As time goes on with the series, he really grows into someone who still has that cocky, arrogant side to him, but isn't an absolute menace to society. Not to say he completely reforms and becomes perfect, but he becomes a way better person than before, and that's what I love to see in these shows. The characters in the show are so good. When they grow, they still have flaws, but they do end up becoming better for it, and it's great. Danpei is a prime example. As someone who's a boxer previously, then a trainer, he has a lot of experience in the sport. Unfortunately, after selling his gym due to it not having any fighters, Danpei becomes a loner who drinks his sorrows away until he finds a future with Joe. Just to make sure Joe would get better, he stops drinking and does everything in his power to get Joe to become a boxer. His persistence and guidance throughout the series really makes him like a father figure, and to see this old drunk man become a dependable figure in the main character's life is something to behold. Other characters, like Rikishi or Yoko, showcase a lot of growth as well. These characters serve more as a driving force for the main character, because Rikishi is Joe's first rival and Yoko is like a caretaker or sponsor of Rikishi. Rikishi is really great, because before Joe meets him, Joe doesn't care about boxing or really anything, so he does the absolute worst to people, so much so that he eventually gets jailed. As we see later, however, Rikishi really whips him into shape and tries to stop his wild nature. While it seems like it might just be a rivalry, it's much more than that. Rikishi is really a man who changes Joe for the better. Joe sees him as the kind of guy who he can look up to because compared to him, Joe's just a wild animal. They both motivate each other to become better, just like any great rival. Yoko is the other character that becomes pretty good too. Like I said before, she's kind of like the caretaker to Rikishi. Her family controls the Shiraki group, a rich organization that also happens to sponsor people to become boxers. Rikishi is still hoping to become a boxer after getting sent to Juvie. Now she's more of a complacent doormat kind of person in the beginning, 
but after the series progresses, she ends up taking a lot of matters into her own hands, and even helps Joe a lot in his own boxing career, which helps progress Joe forward. The last character I want to talk about is Nishi. From what his character starts as, a literal boss of a gang of prisoners, to what his character ends as, it's so good to see. He changes into a dependable man who's super kind, even boxes with Joe. Nishi is a side character who I just loved. Even though his initial change was fast, it's really the rest of the series that makes him great, just like every other character. Okay, if I talk about the rest of the characters, it's going to take way too long, but you get my point about how the characters are the stars, rather than the story, or even the boxing. The characters make this show. Without it, I wouldn't be able to endure the 100 plus episodes this show turns out to be. That might sound like a turnoff for most, but trust me when I say, it's so worth it. The buildup of the story is also great too. Honestly, it kind of starts slow if you're expecting the boxing to come soon. Remember, it's a character focused show. I actually initially liked the beginning part of the story, because to me, it felt like a standard sports manga, especially when he starts to get serious about boxing. He learns the basics of boxing, and starts to put things into play against Rikishi, and that was fun to see. But the real fun begins a bit later, with a big event that starts off the second season. This is when I really got into the series. This big event makes Joe really reevaluate things in his life, and even reevaluate his love for boxing. It's really good at showcasing the brutality of boxing, unlike Ippo, which showcases the technicality and the fun of boxing. I can't really say much more because of spoilers, but trust me when I say that when you see the full picture of the entire anime, every part is so worth the 100 episodes. The art is heavily stylized. It looks cartoony like Astro Boy, but it looks a little more refined. Because the art is stylized like this, I feel like it will never age poorly. If you make something too realistic, it ends up looking bad in a couple years, so for them to go with this art style is pretty nice. The animation isn't too bad either. I like the fluidity of the punches and the moves during the fights. The second season looks so much better too, although it was a 10 year gap between the seasons, so that's understandable. The music is also super memorable as well. The openings and the ending themes are such bangers. Since it's a show that came out in the 70s, it sounds very 70s like, and that's a good thing for me. I like that sound, and it's very addicting to listen to for sure. The second season came out in the 80s, and the tracks in that season are so good. I listen to them all the time. They also sound very 80s like. It also has Midnight Blues, which is such a great opening, and the ending theme, which I listen to constantly. Now that I've talked about all the things I've enjoyed about this show, let's discuss the things I didn't really enjoy. First off, I know the show has so much boxing in it, but honestly, I don't really like the fights in this show. Maybe watching something like Hajime no Ippo first kinda sullied my expectations of what the fights would be in this show. In Ippo, Ippo, our main character, goes through all the fundamentals of the sport, and with each new opponent, he has to figure out their weaknesses and gain new abilities. It's a classic sports anime formula, where we get the chance to learn the technical aspect of the sport. But Ashita no Joe really doesn't do this. Besides the prison arc, this show focuses more on Joe's persistence in the ring and how he's really a wild animal with an iron will. Unlike a more refined boxer like Rikishi, Joe takes a lot of punches and honestly gets knocked down a lot. But his strategy is more along the lines of either finding a weak point in the opponent or no strategy. I think it's nice to watch the matches because with each match, he grows as a boxer. Each match has a purpose and each match makes Joe more deadly, tactical, but also more refined, and that's great to see. Actually watching the matches, however, it's like watching a normal boxing match with little commentary. They don't go into technical details and skip around the match a lot. Kinda makes me sad, but how he grows and changes with each match and opponent is definitely worth it. 
The other problem I had with this show is how slow it is. To be fair, this is a show from the 1970s, and the manga wasn't even finished yet, so they had to put a, a lot of filler near the end of the show. The second season adapts the rest of it, but not without redoing the filler at the end of the first season. It makes the pacing better, but it's still a bit slow. It's kind of like an FMA vs FMA Brotherhood situation. If you want to check it out, you can, but note that the second season will just do it again, but much faster. Anyway, in terms of the slowness of the show, I'm not sure if it's a problem with the time period, but shows and movies from around this time period tend to be really slow. I think people of the past were just more willing to sit through longer things, rather than now, where people have a very short attention span, myself included. Think about it. If you've seen things like 2001 A Space Odyssey, The Godfather, Ben-Hur, all of those movies came out around this time, and while they're very good movies, they all suffer from feeling way too slow, at least for a modern audience. They even had intermissions for some of these films, and that's just crazy to think about now. It's hard to really adjust to something this old. I even struggled watching and finishing this show, but after I did finish it, I took a look back, and the build-up and the overall payoff is so worth it. And that's how I feel with Ashton Ojo. It was hard to get used to how slow it was, but just recently, I decided to actually finish it, and trust me, it's so worth it. After I finished the show, I was honestly so stunned. I wanted more. I legit couldn't stop thinking about this show. Even after a couple of months, I still occasionally think about this show and want to rewatch it or talk about it with someone. I even watched Megalo Box again because I wanted more, but it didn't satisfy my urges as much as Ashita no Joe did. Despite not liking the pace of the show, despite not enjoying the boxing scenes too much, I can safely say after finishing all of it, that it has now become, maybe, my favorite anime of all time. I'm not too sure yet, but to be this impactful has gotta mean something, right? In any case, I hope you enjoyed this long review. I just wanted to point out all the greatness this show has to offer. Like I said before, this show isn't licensed, so if you can find it somewhere out there, I highly recommend it. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe so we can get this to a wider audience. Also, don't forget, join the Hive Mind. Mind.